I think they can see you, Coco. They can definitely see you. Happy holidays. So something really big happened the other day. Really big. I achieved my strict ring muscle up. It's a big deal because it took 4.5 years for me to be able to do this. On the 27th of December, I turn on the video camera, I walk over to the rings and I just knew, I knew. I knew it was gonna happen. And I made it through the transition, which is always the hardest part. It's like, are we gonna get this far? Because if we get this far, then we can do it. I made the transition and I felt myself continuing to go and I made it past that point where I always fall apart and lose the dip. And I realized at that moment I was doing it. And it was like, holy shit. And I just burst into tears as soon as the elbows locked out at the top. And I cried the whole way down. And I ran to the camera to see the whole thing. And it didn't film it. The iPhone shut off. It's been doing that lately, I don't know why. But it didn't film it. And I just burst into tears in that moment because I didn't have it on camera. And it was such a special moment for me. I had to really calm myself down after the cry and say to myself, you know what, why don't you try it again? And then this voice of doubt in my head was like, no, you're not strong enough. I decided to do it. Part of me realized that it didn't go on camera because it was my sacred moment. A moment that was important to me because I really wanted to get my muscle up before my father died from cancer in 2017. It was something I wanted him to see. And obviously, he passed away in 2017, so he never saw it. And so for me, knowing that the first one wasn't on film, it was a sacred moment that I was able to have with myself and with him, and I understood that that actually happened for a reason. So I wiped away the tears, and I tried it again. And I just said to myself, just try it, and if you can't transition, no big deal, walk away. You can try again tomorrow when you're fresh. And I transitioned. I'm like, I just transitioned twice in a row. This is unbelievable. Well, I have the strength to do the dip. And I did it, and I just kept going. I'm like, holy shit. And I stayed calm in that one because I knew it was going to be on camera. So I, I didn't like burst into tears again. But I was just, in that moment, so proud of myself that I didn't let the voices in my head that were telling me, no, you can't do it twice in a row. I didn't let that get to me, and I did it. And I proved to myself just how damn strong I am mentally in that moment and it made me realize really it's the mental limitations that hold you back more than the physical limitations and it was also awesome because doing it twice in a row made me realize it wasn't a fluke I earned this skill you know this isn't a move that I forced my body into this is something that I earned by building the structure the stability and the mobility over a four and a half year period the very next day I said to myself, Sarah, I don't want you letting, you know, mind games happening. I don't want you developing a performance reluctance with this skill. So I made myself do it again and lo and behold, I did it. I did it. So now I know three times I've tried it, three times I have succeeded. I'm really excited to share this with you. Not because, oh, look at me, I can do a ring muscle up. Because at the end of the day, that's not even what it's about. What I'm excited to share with you is everything I learned along the way. And the bottom line is that if an outcome doesn't happen instantaneously, like it takes four and a half years, the outcome ultimately will boil down to your mindset.
so the muscle up actually isn't even my fantasy goal move. It was back in 2016 and 2017 when I was very interested in CrossFit. But along the way with CrossFit, I became quite enamored with the gymnastics component of CrossFit and that led me to handstands and pole fitness. So obviously the ring muscle up really isn't super necessary for you know, handstands and pole fitness. But I decided to continue pursuing this goal because I realized there'd be tremendous carryover effect. I understood that learning the ring muscle up would help me tackle my weakest links. And I'm not just talking about physical weak links, I'm also talking about mental weak links because the mindset required to learn a skill that might take four and a half years. Gosh, that's a powerful mindset to develop and it's going to serve me so well in everything else I try to do physically as well as anything I choose to do in my life because how you approach your training, it's a mirror for everything else you do in your life. So what did I learn from this experience? What I learned is that the first step is to ditch your ego not make yourself force your body into an outcome or rush an outcome. When you rush an outcome, it really implies that you're coming from a place of lack. Why are you in a rush? As my mom says, are you in a hurry to die? You can't force something. You have to earn it over time. And that means embracing the lag time and giving yourself wiggle room to improve. Like for instance, right now, when I look at my ring muscle up, I can see that there's so much potential for me to clean it up, finesse it, get stronger at it, be able to do consecutive reps, maybe add weights to it, maybe add some party tricks to it. And so I'm very excited. Like this is not the end. This is the beginning. So the first step is to ditch the ego and really have profound intent. For me, I knew that trying to master more difficult gymnastic skills, it would mean I would have to really triage what it was in my body that was holding me back and causing me pain and restrictions, which at the end of the day was really good for me because I didn't like living my life in pain. I mean, even just doing my activities of daily living, I was in pain. So this was really an exciting way for me to get very serious about showing up for myself, to benefit myself and improve my quality of life. I also feel that when you remove ego from the equation, then you start doing things based on how they feel for you. And you can really start to embrace the learning process and getting really curious about what it is you're feeling and maybe, you know, why is this movement pattern feeling off and getting really curious about that and learning how to improve your movement patterns because we're conscious beings, so we have the ability to change and improve our movement patterns. Hey, I'm proof. I'm proof that that is true. In the first few years of my journey, I felt that there was definitely some self-sabotaging behavior. I didn't cultivate the training practice that was required for this from the get-go because I didn't know how. And so my training practice was actually quite disempowering. I was always frustrated, Everything I did was never good enough, and I was always the victim. I was the victim because why is everybody else able to do things, but I have upper trap dominance? Why am I crooked? Why does my left low back always you know, hurt, and why is it always in spasm? Why do I have poor mobility? Why is my knee so painful? So I was the victim of all of my circumstances. And that's when I realized that the biggest obstacle I had to face wasn't the upper trap dominance, or the aches and pains, or the deleterious movement patterns I would have to learn how to fix, which takes time. It was actually my mindset. It was limiting me. And once I learned how to show up for myself so that I could improve daily and start recognizing the small little wins that I was making on a daily basis, that's when things really started to move in the right direction. That's how I started to build momentum. And it's why I was able to start showing up and actually enjoy what I was doing and enjoying learning because that's really what this is. It's learning. It's getting curious about your body and learning how to improve. There's no need to beat yourself up. It serves you no purpose to beat yourself up. I always tell my Strength Academy members to focus on the small wins and the small wins are way more important than 
you know, that moment when you hold your handstand for the first time for eight seconds or you get your ring muscle up, it's way more important than these big wins because the small wins are what solidify that you're on the right path. And that's what keeps you showing up. Basically, quitting is not an accident. It depends on the lens through which you view your world. And so if you're always the victim, if you're always struggling, then yeah, you're probably going to end up quitting because you're going to be very busy trying to collect evidence of all the reasons why you should quit, especially if you play the comparison game, which is so easy to do with Instagram. I mean, we're constantly looking at people who've mastered their craft and we compare ourselves to that, which is absolutely ridiculous. And the thing is, these people who are masters had to start at the very beginning. And maybe they don't show you that. And that's why it's important to me that I show that to you, what it was like for me when I first started. If we take a look at this picture of my bridge, the wheel, you can see there's a dramatic improvement there in my thoracic spine mobility, my hip extension, the hip flexor opening, uh, the overhead mobility. It's actually quite dramatic. And I was in a lot of pain before. I'm telling you, if you have poor T-spine extension, that's a recipe for pain in your body. Nobody really talks about T-spine extension and how important that is. And that's that's just something I wanna make sure that my student academy members understand. And that's why we focus on it so much. And when you look at this picture, it makes you realize, you know, this didn't happen overnight. Like, it has been such a slow process for me to improve my wheel, just like it was such a slow process for me to get my ring muscle up. And really what sets me apart from people who quit is that I was able to stay focused and continue to believe in what it was that I was doing, even though I wasn't seeing immediate results. And that takes, that takes a really, really strong person to be able to do that. And that's why I'm strong. I'm not strong because I can do a muscle up. I am strong because I was able to ditch the instantaneous mindset, to ditch the disempowering mindset, to tell my ego to take a cigarette break and approach this in a way that would actually result in success, even though it would take a long time. And it was worth it for me. Having quality of life and better movement and having the ability to do the things that I want to be able to do in life, it's worth it. And the confidence it has given me in myself to know that no matter what it is that you throw at me, I will be able to overcome any challenge. This has turned me into a challenge tackling machine. I know I can do anything now. So are you going to commit to your limitations or are you going to commit to what it is that you want to achieve? What's it going to be? I really believe that movement can heal you. Not just physically, like yes, I have overcome pain and I've improved my mobility restrictions and I've become a badass, but it healed what was going on with me mentally. And by being able to triage my mental bullshit, that's what allowed the opportunity for me to blossom physically. And I think you can learn how to connect with your body in a way that can completely free you of all of this inner bullshit. I mean, imagine, you know, if I walked up to the rings four and a half years ago and I was able to do a ring muscle up the first time I tried it and it was easy for me. It would mean absolutely nothing to me. But understanding that it took four and a half years. Think of the amount of learning that had to happen there. Think about how much resilience and grit I developed the length of time I had to really develop my mindset. Think about how this has made me a better teacher because I was able to overcome all of these things that were wrong with me so that I can instantly spot it in other people and help them move along at a faster rate than I did. I really see the value in everything that has happened to me. It happened to me for a reason. And I now understand that my greatest challenges and obstacles and limitations have become my greatest source of power. And I really believe that transform people can transform people. And if you're in my academy, now you understand why so much time is spent with the mindset training, because that's ultimately what's going to determine if you are going to achieve, you know, a handstand or a pull up or a pistol squat or the splits or whatever it is that finds your Nemo. It really boils down to your mindset.
It is so important that you believe you can get the result that you are looking for. If you don't believe that, then you're never going to take action. I believed that I would be able to get rid of knee pain and back pain and upper trap dominance and improve my mobility. I believed that I could learn pull-ups and handstands and I believe I can learn how to dance. I believe I can learn how to do a press handstand. I believed I could learn how to do a ring muscle up. Hello. When I first installed the rings, people made fun of me because I had scapular instability and I had one shoulder like this and I couldn't even do a pull-up. And that didn't stop me. I would just like to say to those people who made fun of me, taste my lightning, motherfuckers. <laughs> so to summarize the key points, action removes limitations. And it doesn't even have to be the right action. The wrong action will eventually lead you to the right action. So just take action. Two, embrace the lag time. You gotta give yourself wiggle room to improve. What you do today might not manifest itself until tomorrow or six months from now or 4.5 years from now, just like the Chinese bamboo tree that takes five years before it actually starts to grow. But the cumulative effect of consistently doing the right things, that is going to ultimately lead you where you want to go. Three, quitting is not an accident. It's because you cannot celebrate your little wins. You can't quiet that voice in your head that just tears you down. Four, show up for yourself. Do it for yourself. It's important for self-care. The only way you fail is if you quit. I'm not an overnight success story and I want that to be clear. You know, sometimes you might just look at me banging out a handstand or a muscle up or some weighted pull ups and think, she's probably been doing that since she was like a fetus. Um, no, I was not an athlete as a child or a teenager or in school at all. In fact, I failed the Canada fitness test. Nothing has come easy for me. You know, sometimes the hardest part for me was just showing up because there were so many times that I felt like such a lost cause, like where do I even begin? Like I was in so much pain, I'm like I don't even know how to go about moving without things hurting me. I have to say that what this experience taught me was to stop being a victim. You always have the choice to choose victim or victory and you gotta choose victory every single damn time. That's how you choose yourself in life. One thing that I used to always say is that, oh I'm on a struggle bus or I'm struggling and I've learned to stop saying that. And I won't let the people in my academy say the yes word either, struggling. You know, you're struggling if you're walking down a dark alleyway and somebody, you know, holds you at knife point. You're struggling, okay? But, you know, struggling to try to learn how to do a core exercise? No. The question is, are you struggling or are you working hard? So now I've learned to say, I'm working hard. And that has really helped me realize that I have been a drama queen unnecessarily in my training practice for years. And I would label things in a very disempowering way. So I've learned to change my vocabulary. And I've learned to realize that nothing's a rush. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And if you respect that, then you're not going to force yourself to do something and injure yourself. So much physical and mental healing has come from my four and a half year journey. I'm really proud of myself and I'm so excited to be able to teach others the things that I've learned along the way. It just means so much to me that I even have this platform. I thank God I started out as a fitness model that I have this platform because now I can do something so good with it. So if you're ready and you want to become a better you and have an empowering training practice and decrease pain and just start showing up for yourself, I would love to help you with that. And if I can be a part of that journey and you're, you're actually ready to show up, let's do this. Let's do this. So you can check the link below to join my Strength Academy. New members are welcome. We are a pretty cool group. It's, it's become a place that really empowers me and inspires me and I protect that environment. So if you're not in the right headspace for this and you don't think I can help you get into the right headspace, it's okay, it's not your time right now. 
you know where to find me when it is your time. In order to commit to anything, you have to be ready, whether it's a relationship um, or, you know, deciding, okay, I actually want to fix my back pain and stop my urinary incontinence and fix my diastasis recti, fix my scapular winging, be able to actually raise my hand overhead, maybe even learn a few cool things with my body, some cool skills. You have to be ready for it. And I wasn't ready until I hit rock bottom. And that's usually true for most people. You have to have that moment where you're like, shit, this is not how I want to live my life. And you're just at that moment where you're like, whoa, I need to wake my soul the fuck up and make some changes. And so I have so much respect for the people in my academy who've been going at this now for 30 weeks. I know all the emotions every single day that you go through and you always have to make that choice to be like, nope, I am choosing victory. I'm quieting all the self-doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm not gathering evidence for reasons why I suck. I'm focusing on exactly why it is that I'm here in the first place. I have so much respect for that. Sometimes I lose my train of thought, so let's just do a quick cooking intermission and then we'll be back. It's winter time, which means it's persimmon season. And in case you didn't know, my favorite fruit is persimmons. In case you want to send me a holiday fruit basket or something, you know. Just kidding. No, I'm not. There are two kinds of persimmons. Ones that I like and ones that I don't like. These are the ones that I like. They're called Fuyu persimmons. And these are the Hachia ones. I don't like these ones. Look at the difference. It has a little nipple on the bum. It looks like an acorn. And you can see the color difference too. You can eat the fuyu, fuyu, anytime, even when it's slightly unripe, which I do all the time because I'm not willing to play the persimmon long game, people, okay? I need instant persimmon gratification. This one, however, if you have it while it's unripe, it tastes astringent. What does that mean? It means it torments the crap out of your mouth. It constricts all of the tissues in your mouth, desiccates them, like it dries them out so you stop salivating. It even makes your teeth feel really, really dry. It is the most tormenting, god-awful feeling in the whole entire world. Don't try it. I will demonstrate what astringent tastes like. Self-destruct sequence activated. Now, if you wait for these to ripen, they become jelly-like on the inside. So, as I said, I don't know how to play the persimmon long game. So let me show you what I do about this. So I slice these suckers up and I put them into the food dehydrator. And this removes the astringency. I figured this out through self-experimentation. Google was slightly helpful. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Dried persimmons and my dishwasher's on. And yes, it did remove the astringency. They're delicious, very sweet. Posuda Mayachnia Machina. Mikrovolnovaya Pitch. Everything's labeled in Russian. Look what BSN gave me for Christmas. Chocolate Crunch and some wars. The very first one on the right I told you was squash. The lower dish is, is turnip. Squash, turnip, mashed potatoes, marshmallows on Sweet, it's, it's sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes with marshmallows, that looks really good. Stuffing, my favorite. Peas, my favorite. Turkey. Mom, they're staring at us eating. <laughs> yeah, he's way bigger. Yeah, his head's twice the size. These are Auntie's chow mein cookies and they're the best. Almond meringues. And actually, Mom and I did a video recipe for this. The link is below. Granny shortbread, and she dipped some of them in Cadbury chocolate. Cadbury chocolate's the best. And cherry chews, we love yous, and mom's not sharing that recipe because those are the best and it's top secret. Their Christmas gift. Oh, oh, they're gonna break the house. Oh. <laughs> Bean, stop yelling, you're ruining my vlog. What's cooking? Turkey burger, oh, you can go. I also roasted carrots in the oven with olive oil, but I ate most of them. I think these guys are super cute, but I broke this one. Now you can see them. Look at all that cooking. Bean, you're ruining the video. So if you have cats, just put this on top of the element so they don't burn their pads. Bean! Why are you yelling? Are you purring? I agree. I only have one left of the apple pie. Apple pie is the best. Nice boy. Why is your brother screaming? 
Thank you for watching my vlog, for subscribing and for commenting, watching my journey. I really appreciate this community that has been built here. And with the holiday season upon us, I'd like to wish everybody a healthy end of the year and lots of positivity going into 2021. 2021, let's press ahead.